Okay, this is uh, the Y um, Will High temperature controller. Um, it says digital Will High digital temperature controller right there. Um, this is what it looks like on the front. Got these little tabs on the side. You can push in on the tab there and push on these tabs, and it ratchets back and forth. You can see there's little ratchets, little uh, detents there, and that's for closing in on a panel. It's supposed to be mounted in a panel, and then this closes in and clamps on the panel. Um, got one on both sides there. You just push in the tab there, and then you can hear it ratcheting as it goes back. Um, controls on the front. You have uh, lights over here on this side. This is a work light and the set light. The work light comes on when it's on and, um, and the set light comes on when you're, when you're setting the temperatures or changing something. Uh, digital display, uh, set button, reset button. This one you push in, hold down to turn it on and off. This one you push down to set and then you push the up and down buttons to set your temperature. If you push it once, it'll come on and it shows the display temperature that this probe is, is uh, indicating. Um, and the probe here, uh, got a couple feet of line, but that's with the temperature probe right there. And it'll come when it comes on, it shows that. And that's the standby. That's what it runs to, the default setting. It turns to that. Um, to set the temperature that you want this thing to work at, the working temperature, you push the set and then it'll come up with the temperature. You push the up and down buttons to change your setting that you want for your uh, controller. Um, to change the parameters, you push the set button and hold it until the parameters come up, display for the parameters come up in this, and then you can change them, you can run through that. Um, so here, this is the back of the unit here. You can see there's a schematic. Um, this is a number one. There's a terminal behind here. The terminal blocks are in here. This is a number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven and eight are all pre -hook hooked up. Um, that's the the. Uh, temperature probes are hooked into that. If you have a different temperature probe, that's where you'd put it, but these are already set up with, with this temperature probe. Um, one and two, you can see that, that indicates a switch. These are the switched terminals. There's no power or anything in here. Any power that you have will have to come from an outside source, um, but th this is a switch. Uh, three and four, that's the power. That's where you hook your input power up to. In this case, it's 110 volt power that will hook up. Um, and uh, then 5 and 6, those are the uh, ones that you can run a jumper on. Once you get your parameters all set into the controller, you run a jumper between number 5 and number 6, and that locks the uh, controller so that it can't be tampered with. Uh, the temperatures and any parameters that you have set in it can be, can be changed. Um, now this has a little cover over the terminal blocks. It's held on with a with a little Phillips head screw uh, screw. You use a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this, and you could use a jeweler screwdriver, a small Phillips head screwdriver. Little screw, we'll set it aside. This cover comes off, set aside, and now you can see the terminal blocks. There, there's one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and eight. One and two are the switches. Three and four are the power. Five and six are the jumpers. And seven and eight are the uh, indicator, or the probe. Now, we've got a cable here. This is a, a cable. It's an old cable that I salvaged off of uh, uh, heat tape. It has uh, common power and ground. There's no ground on this. There's no hookup for ground. If you're going to use a, uh, this for something, you would probably hook a ground onto the ground lead and run it into whatever uh, you're using, a heater, air conditioner, or something like that. You'd want to hook it up to it. But there's no 
facility for hooking it into this at all. There's no terminal pass through or anything for the ground. So that's just put aside for now. You take your take your power lead, put one leg of it in the number six, and then I use this little jeweler's or instrument screwdriver, which is a large one of the larger sizes in the instrument, and put it in the screw. I've got the wire slid into the terminal block. I've opened up the terminal block by unscrewing that screw and now I'll tighten it down. Now that wire is in that screw. Take the other wire. One of them is common, one of them is power. Um, put it in the terminal block. Tighten it down. Okay, now we have power to the unit. Well, we don't have power to it yet because I don't have it turned on or plugged in, but uh, we'll plug it into the wall. That's a, one of the rules you use is don't don't work with a live circuit. Unplug it from your supply. Now it's plugged in. Come on. It's showing a temperature of 17.2 degrees. If I put my fingers on the probe, you'll see that changes pretty rapidly to go up to body temperature. Take them off. And it'll start dropping back down to ambient temperature room temperature. Now, you said this reset button, you push it, that, should, that turns it off, push it again, that turns it on. The set button, push the set button, that sets it to the, uh, what you want the temperature to, or the, to be set at. And I've got this already programmed so it's not changing any. Um, got it set, uh, the internal parameters already set for uh, the 37 and 38 degrees. So if I push the set button in and hold it, then it comes up to the uh, change in the parameters. Uh, and this is heat and cool. And you see it only lasts for a few seconds before it uh, changes back to your default setting or your uh, indicated setting. Huh? change it again. We've got a light over here for set and we change this and run it through the different defaults. Now HC means heat and cool and we've got it want to set it on heat. If I wanted to set it to cool we'd go like that down. We want it set for heat so it's set for heat. That's the heating and cooling. Now to, to go to the next one D. D is the differential. We've got a that's how many degrees that it'll change before it, say if you've got it set for 38 degrees, that's how many degrees it'll drop down after it, it shuts off at 38 degrees before it kicks back on again. And I don't want a very big difference. I want it to come on at 37, go off at 38, come on at 37 to keep an average temperature of 37.5. Okay, already switched back to the panel setting, the default setting. Hold it. Now we're back to the uh, changing the parameters. There's D. Um, there's LS, which is the low setting. I want to set it. I've got it set to 32, 37 degrees. It'll go down to uh, minus 50 degrees. So you can change it. This thing will work down to minus 50 degrees uh, for like freezer work or something like that and I, I don't want it to go uh, to change from the parameters I want it set in. I was setting it for an incubator so we want it to to run at 30. What ideal temperature for the incubator for poultry is 37.5 degrees Celsius so I'll set this so that it can the lowest point it can go down to is 37 and then we'll set it. Okay now we got the HS is the high setting and I got it set for 38. The highest it will go to is 110. Say if you wanted it in something like a kiln or a heater of some kind that was was pretty hot, you could set it up to 110 degrees. Um, you know, a kiln obviously depend, wouldn't be that high. 100 degrees Celsius is uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but so uh, 110 would be a few degrees above that. But if you wanted it in an oven or something that would heat up to uh, 200. And, uh, 20, 230 degrees, whatever 110 Celsius is, that's what you'd set. Uh, 
I've got it set for 38, so the highest it'll go is to 38. Uh, calibrate. Um, that's for changing if the if the probe is not accurate. If you put a calibrated thermometer against it and the probe is not accurate, you can set to calibrate to adjust it up and down to reflect um, to, to calibrate it so it reads correctly, so it reads what a calibrated thermometer would. Um, we've got zero set there, so that's fine. Um, P7, that's the um, timing on it that sets it. It's actually PT, but it's a, a time timer. So uh, it doesn't have any effect on what I'm using it for. Uh, what they explain it in the uh, instruction manual is that it's like if you're running an, a compressor or an air conditioner or a or a, a freezer or something like that, and you don't want a, a quick cycle time. If the temperature is changing fast, you don't want a quick cycle time on your motors. Then you can set the timing on there so that it it takes a, a certain amount of time before it kicks back on again after it reaches the temperature uh, that it drop, you want it to drop down to. And that's pretty much it. We've got that set for 38. There's HC, there's the differential, um, low setting, high setting, calibration, and the, the PT, and uh, heating and cooling. And so that's, that's basically it. We have this now set up for a uh, temperature controller for a, uh, an incubator. Um, now then, that one, I'll turn it off. I've got another one that I've already set up that we've been running. A little box set up here with a light bulb in it. So I unplugged, I turned that off. I unplugged it, my power supply. I'll come in here, unscrew these two screws in the in the terminal box, pull my power cord out, and I'm going to put this one aside back here. I'll bring out this one. Now this one, same thing. I've just got it set up um, to operate an incubator or a light bulb, a heater. Um, I don't have power going into it, so what I've done here, we've got our power terminal here. This is where the power goes in. Uh, I take a jumper off the power terminal and run it over to one leg of my switch here. And then we'll take another uh, wire and go from the second leg of the switch to the light bulb in this case, or heater, whatever you want to turn on and off. And then we take um, a wire. We have to have a return for our power. So we take a wire that comes back, back from our light bulb, our heat, heat source, our heat unit, and uh, take these little nippers and, and trim that off a little bit so it uh, doesn't stick out of the terminal block quite so far. Uh, make it a little cleaner. So now then we've got our power here. And I've got my, my jumper here to here, Lord, and I'll loosen that screw up. It's already loose. So we'll stick the power in, piggyback it on that one, tighten that terminal block down. Now that's our jumper for power to the switch. That's, that's switched. Now this will, we'll call this our common. We'll stick it in the other terminal and we'll take our common back, return back from our our working unit light bulb and uh, get the screwdriver in there loosen that screw up a little bit for the terminal block I've got these two wires I'm going to have to put them in there together okay I'll put these two wires in the terminal block and tighten it up. Okay, now they're in there. Okay, now this this is the uh, temperature probe, switch, and power. There's the unit. Now plug it back in. Find the plug. Apply power to it. Stand back in case it smokes. Everything's working good, comes on, 